I'm William Brown. I teach Old Testament or Hebrew Bible. One of the various ways that the text engages us is that it lays claims about the, the world and about God's work in the world. Uh, these texts, in a way, are very, uh, they are meant to be embodied. Um, uh, they are meant to um, inspire us to engage in new ways in the world. And the world is comprised of many cultures, um, peoples, but there is one global culture that impacts almost every part of the world, and that is science. And um, I came, actually, uh, to seminary with um, uh, almost, not quite, a science degree. I changed my major um, towards the end uh, from engineering to philosophy. But I've always had a love for science. And when I went to seminary, I, I thought I was basically putting my interest in science on the back burner. But ever since then, I've been wondering how can I integrate my own interests and background in science with my work as a biblical interpreter and as, as a theologian. This was sort of an unexplored area of, uh, of hermeneutics uh, that was just waiting to be explored. Um, and for me, bringing together science and faith is a natural fit, despite contrary opinion among some of my Christian brothers and sisters. But if, um, if theology is faith-seeking understanding, as St. Anselm once said, and science is a form of understanding seeking further understanding, then the church has nothing to fear from science, in fact, has a lot to learn from science. Science is a way of understanding the world, and if theology for it to be real is to be engaged with our understandings of the world, then theology needs to be informed by science. Biblical faith needs to be informed by science as well. So I've been engaged for the last few years um, seeing what happens when you engage uh, these ancient texts such as the creation traditions uh, through the lens of science. Um, to, to note the differences, realizing that these biblical texts are not scientific texts in any modern sense. And yet science has a way of perhaps deepening uh, the significance of what the Bible says about the world, that the world is, is made together, it's interdependent, um, that the world is resilient yet also fragile. Um, the, the call for humankind to exercise dominion over creation in Genesis 1 is not a call to exploit the world, it's not a call to destroy it or damage it, it's a call to sustain it. And we need science to figure out how to sustain the world in which we live today. The physical realm of science is, uh, has an important place in our theological thinking and, and activity. Because if, if our faith is an incarnational faith, um, testified in the Gospels of Jesus as the Word made flesh, then we also need to know something about the world made flesh as well. So how the Word made flesh impacts the world made of flesh is, I think, uh, a calling, particularly in this day and age in which we are damaging the world in which we live that God created and called good. Um, how, how do we reclaim the goodness of creation um, today when that seems to be um, crumbling uh, before our very eyes, whether it's climate change or uh, poisoning our rivers and streams or the acidification of our oceans? Uh, these are all clarion calls to recover that ancient mandate to, uh, um, to serve and to preserve the earth, as in Genesis 2, or to exercise a kind of dominion that sustains the goodness of creation in Genesis 1. Uh, so science, and particularly ecology, are uh, domains in which we need to bring together into our faith as well, to gain wisdom on how to live responsibly to inhabit the world well that God has called us to do, um, and to share a gospel that affirms and heightens the goodness of creation itself. Um, so if the incarnation was the word made flesh, and flesh is all of life, not just human flesh, but the flesh of life itself, 
then the incarnation has something redemptive and liberative to say about all creation. And so for me, the very root of our incarnational faith in Jesus Christ is a way of um, renewing our call to sustain creation. Christ for the world. Uh, we have an active student organization called SAGE, uh, which stands for Sustaining Attention to God's Earth. Uh, that also includes faculty advisors. And, uh, and this group has been uh, um, uh, inspiring the larger community to do things uh, more uh, that are ecologically um, uh, sustainable as well as we're cultivating a garden on campus, uh, too, uh, for, um, uh, for students and faculty, anyone to, to harvest. Um, and this is also in conjunction with a program called Global Growers. Global Growers is an organization that brings immigrant families uh, uh, back to the land, building community uh, here in the larger area. Uh, diverse as it is, is also kind of a nice spin-off of, uh, of this garden project that we're working on. I see the future of Columbia as being a microcosm of the world in which we live. We have our cutting edges and in innovations that other seminaries aren't doing, such as uh, integrating science, um, uh, moving towards being a green seminary, being committed to a life of justice uh, and equity, uh, for all persons of faith, please consider Columbia Seminary. Come to campus. Uh, look me up. I'd love to engage you in conversation as well. Uh, so let me just say, welcome to Columbia.